In this lesson, we'll discuss the idea of generalized sampling, which is a mathematical concept that allows us to represent a continuous time function or signal as a discrete collection of values that can be processed, transmitted, or stored by devices that utilize digital technology. Well, most electrical engineers are introduced to the concept of sampling through something called the Nyquist-Shannon Sampling Theorem, which most people refer to as simply the sampling theorem. The general idea is that signals such as speech or radar or radio or any physical phenomena that fluctuate in time are associated with something called a frequency spectrum, and this spectrum tells us something about how rapidly the signal fluctuates in time. The spectrum at the top, for instance, is associated with a signal that contains no fluctuations faster than 1000 Hz or cycles per second, whereas the spectrum on the bottom is associated with a signal that contains no fluctuations faster than 2000 Hz or cycles per second. Accordingly, we say that the signal at the top has a bandwidth that is equal to 1000 Hz or 1 kHz, and the signal on the bottom has a bandwidth that is equal to 2 kHz. The great insight of the sampling theorem is that if a signal is band limited to some bandwidth b in hertz, then we can completely represent the signal by taking uniform samples of the signal at a rate of at least two times b samples per second. As an example, here's a segment of a voice signal that has been sampled at say 8,000 samples per second, and the red dots show the sampled values and According to the sampling theorem, we should be able to perfectly recover this signal from these samples if the voice signal itself was band limited to 4000 Hz or lower. But if we simply connect the adjacent dots with straight lines to try to reconstruct the signal, we'll get something close but not a perfect match to the original signal. So how do we get the signal back from these samples? Well, the answer is something called sync interpolation. At each sample, we place a sync function. And a sync function is equal to the sine of pi times t over pi times t. But we scale each of these sinks to have an amplitude that's equal to that particular sample value. And we stretch the sync so that the first zero crossing occurs at the location of the adjacent sample. So this is the sync function that corresponds to this particular sample. Then if we do this for every sample, and then we add up all of these functions, the superposition of these functions will be a perfect representation of the original signal, provided that the relationship between the sample spacing and the signal's bandwidth satisfy the conditions of the sampling theorem. Now this important concept is used in just about all digital technology that involves speech, sounds, images, or any other types of physical signals. Generalized sampling is the idea of representing a signal x of t as a superposition of some fundamental signals phi sub k of t that we refer to as the basis signals or the basis set. If we use sync functions for the basis, for instance, a single basis function, perhaps for k equals 0, might look something like this. Another of the basis functions, perhaps for k equal 1, which might correspond to the original basis function shifted slightly, might look like this. And perhaps if we shift it the other way, maybe this is k equal minus 4, it would look something like this. And here's another example of a basis function that's simply a rectangle function. Perhaps this is the basis function that corresponds to k equals 0. And then another, perhaps for k equal 1, might look like this, which looks like the original basis function shifted over to the right. And finally, here's another example of a basis function that might be a triangle function. This might correspond to k equal 0, and perhaps this is k equal 1. Now each of these examples utilized a fundamental shape for the basis function, and I've shown that as k equal 0, for instance, and each new basis function in the set was created by simply shifting the fundamental shape to the right or the left, corresponding to the indices k. In this sense, these basis functions sample the signal over local regions, but at some point, 
we'll discuss basis functions that sample signals in other ways. Now for a particular signal x of t, there's nothing that guarantees that we can find coefficients, the alphas, that will perfectly represent the signal for a particular basis set. In an attempt to do the best that we can do, we might assign the coefficients so that the integrated square error between the original signal and our approximation, that we'll denote as x with a little hat on top of it, is as small as possible. One way to define smallness is through the integrated squared error, and if we work through the math on this and set the derivative of this error with respect to each coefficient to zero, we'll arrive at a system of linear equations that define the optimal coefficients. Now the quantities in the angled brackets are called inner products, and they're very important for many applications of mathematics in engineering and science. Simply stated, an inner product is the integral of the product of two functions. Qualitatively, we can think of an inner product as telling us the degree to which the two signals have the same shape. Here, for instance, the inner product of the kth and the lth elements in the basis is the product of those two functions integrated. The inner product of the kth basis function with the original signal is the product of those two integrated over all time. Now the inner product of a signal with itself is called the norm for the signal, and we sometimes refer to this as the total energy for the signal. In addition, the square root of the norm is sometimes called the length of the signal. Now when the inner product between two signals is equal to zero, we say that the signals are orthogonal. And this denotes a situation when the signals are very dissimilar. This is important though, because when all pairs of functions in a basis are orthogonal, that is for any pair k and l, where k is not equal to l, we get zero, we'll call that an orthogonal basis, and the solution for the kth optimal sampling coefficient is determined by the inner product of the kth basis function with the signal, and then scaled by the norm for the basis function. Now when the norm of each basis function is equal to one, and the basis functions are orthogonal, then we say that the basis set is orthonormal. In this case, the coefficient is simply the inner product of the appropriate basis function with the signal, because the normalization factors would all be one. Now let's think about the basis functions for the classic sampling theorem. Turns out that these correspond to a collection of sync functions, each scaled and shifted according to some sample spacing delta. And this defines the width of each sync function. Now provided that we use this basis for signals that are band limited to frequencies below 1 over 2 delta, then the inner product of the kth basis function with the signal will be the signal sampled at time k times delta. And because the norms for these basis functions are all equal to 1 over delta, then the kth coefficient is the sample of the signal at time k times delta, scaled by the sample spacing delta. Well, in summary, generalized sampling with orthogonal basis functions is an important concept that has many applications in engineering science, and it's important to be familiar with this concept and with the method for determining the optimal sampling coefficients.